Welcome to part two of our time impact analysis demonstration. Delay event number one has been taken care of. Now let's move on to delay event number two. So we're going to repeat the entire procedure. So please copy and paste delay event number two from the Excel file and insert it into the MS project program. An important thing to remember is that before you introduce the delay event, you need to update the program to see if there was any slippage to the planned program. If there was any slippage, you need to make a record of that and include it within the delay analysis table. So this is what differentiates a time impact analysis from an impacted as planned analysis. In other words, time impact analysis takes into account the current situation on site and the overall assessment is done in a contemporaneous manner. I didn't want to introduce additional delay variables into this analysis because you might have ended up being completely confused about time impact analysis. But please do bear this in mind. Before you introduce a new delay event, update the current program and take into account any delays or gains to the previous update of the program. This is the last activity for our fragment. Let's call it Excavation Works Post Delay. Excavation Works Pre Delay is the first activity of our fragment, so it should have a start date equal to the original activity Excavation Works start date, and the finish date would depend on the calendar you're using. So it could be the date prior to the start of the delay event or the exact start date of the delay event. For this exercise, I'm using the latter option because that ties in with the calendar I'm using. So the finish date for the excavation works pre-delay is the 19th of June 2015 and the start date for delay event 2 is the same date. So now we need to enter the date for the last activity in the fragment which is excavation works post-delay. So while entering the finish date for this activity, MS Project will give us two options for the start date of this activity. Please make sure to choose the first one, which is keep the constraint. We'll adjust the constraints later. Now you might be thinking the start date should be equal to the 19th of June 2015, but the 19th of June 2015 is a Friday, so we have to take into account the weekend. So the start date has to be the 22nd. And when you get this planning wizard pop-up menu, please make sure to click on the second option. Now it's time to connect our fragment to the main network. So let's put a finish to start relationship from land surveying to excavation works pre-delay and another finish to start relationship from excavation works post-delay to sewerage and drainage works. After this has been carried out, we can now remove the constraints which have been implemented by MS Project. Please change all the constraint types to the default as soon as possible option. Everything still looks good. The finish date hasn't changed. So now we're in a position to delete the original excavation activity. And once again, the finish date has not changed. So the network logic is sound. Now we move on to the next important step. We need to update the project to the start date of the delay event. Okay, that's done and everything looks good. So now it's time to move on to the next step, which is to save your next baseline. Baseline number three is going to be the next baseline. And the program reference is again in the Excel spreadsheet. Now it's time to insert the relevant delay duration to delay event number two. So please enter the 24th of June as a finish date for delay event number two. And we get a duration of three days, which will not tie up with your Excel spreadsheet, but not to worry. This is because weekends are not taken into account in Excel. That is why we have five days in Excel and three days in MS Project. While carrying out a time impact analysis on MS Project, 
please make sure that you simultaneously update the delay analysis table in Excel. Once this is done, we have to save the next baseline, which is baseline number four, post impact. And there you have it. You have successfully impacted the program with your second delay event. One last step is to remove the constraint from delay event number two and ensure that there is no change to the project finish date. Everything looks good. And now we're ready to move on to the next delay event. Just a quick reminder, please note that you have to update the delay analysis table while progressing your time impact analysis. Change the calendar dates and the durations. Insert whether it's a critical or non-critical activity and so on and so forth. In general, populate all the relevant sections of the delay analysis table. We've finished populating the delay analysis table, so let's move on to the next delay event. At this point, I would like to suggest that you pause the video and you try to carry out the third impact independently. And please come back and check if you got it right. I'd just like to remind you one more time, before commencing the impact of a new delay event, please update your program with contemporary records and analyze any changes to the project critical path. If there are any delays to the project critical path post your previous update, they have to be allocated to the party responsible for the same and the delay analysis table should be populated with all the pertinent information. Once this is done, you can proceed with TIA and impact the network with the next delay event. So coming back to our time impact analysis, I'm in the process of inserting a fragnet for the third delay event. By now, you should be quite well versed in inserting fragnets into the network. If you're still having issues with this exercise, please go back and review my video tutorial on how to create a fragnet. The fragment has been successfully inserted. There's no change to the finish date. So now we can delete the original backfill and compaction activity. There's no change to the project finish date. Everything looks good. So the last step is to delete the constraints created by MS project. Again, everything looks fine. Now update the project to the start date of the delay event. Set the baseline to baseline number 5. You may have noticed that all the steps are repetitive, and it is. Make sure you make a note of the program reference.
And now we come to the final step which is to insert the delay duration for delay event number 3 and set the final baseline. The project completion date has been moved forward and the revised completion date is the 25th of August 2015. Remove the constraint that has been generated automatically by MS Project and then we set our final baseline. Which is baseline number 6. And the only thing left to do is to populate the Excel delay analysis table. And finally, let's have a look at the tracking Gantt chart and compare the current program to the original baseline program. There are significant variances and this will form the basis of your delay analysis narrative, along with a detailed narrative explaining the variance between each baseline. So this is how you carry out a time impact analysis.